What's going on YouTube? Theo Bean here. Today we are doing my review of God of War Ragnarok. As you can see, uh, I'm taking a break for this review. Been working outside the All Father's walls. Um, you know, with everybody else just putting in some work, doing the time. So, but with that, I decided now would be a good time to kind of take a break and kind of do this review here. So, here we go. In 2018, myself, as well as many others, played God of War for the very first time. After completing what is now the 2018 Game of the Year, many thought how Santa Monica Studios could follow up a title such as God of War. After playing through God of War Ragnarok, I'm glad to say that they did exactly that while also eclipsing it in some areas compared to God of War 2018. So with that, this is my review. In my opinion, this story for God of War Ragnarok is even better than that of 2018. The story is going to be by far, in my opinion, the best part of the game. From beginning to end, it does a perfect job of seemingly picking up where 2018 ended and carrying you through right into the action of the second game. I will say that going into this game, maybe I am a little biased in my review and that I do have a love for Norse mythology. So going through playing through the game 2018 as well as Ragnarok, I've loved every single step of the way. With Ragnarok being a direct sequel to God of War 2018, it does a fantastic job of transitioning right over into it. I think you might even be able to safely say that God of War 2018 has the best intro of any game that is out. The entire first hour of this game is so incredible, the way it starts right off the bat doesn't miss a beat and will have you going, holy shit, what is going on? as you go through and realize that the tone is set so early on for what is in store for Kratos and Atreus. Ragnarok is a masterclass in storytelling, as the story of Kratos and Atreus continues on the theme of parenting and fatherhood. We get to play through the continuing growth of Kratos and Atreus, relationship as well as getting to see the relationship between some of the other characters to introduce the story and how they will fare against fate itself. The way Santa Monica Studios tells this story and getting to see the relationship between Kratos and Atreus as well as the other characters, their relationships to one another, their past experiences and everything we've seen, how they all come together is truly, truly incredible. From start to finish, I loved every bit of the story and how everything from the surroundings, the voice acting, the characters all came together to craft such a beautiful story that will leave you fighting to keep your eyes dry. Also, the same can be said about how seamless and familiar the combat is for God of War and Ragnarok compared to that of 2018. Some of the abilities and moves will be different compared to that of 2018, but yet the same overall mechanics regarding combat feel just as good, if not better, in this sequel. Additionally, you also get some new elements and things to use here in Ragnarok that fit just in perfectly, that make it feel kind of the same effects that God of War 2018 had where combat is very easy to pick up, yet also difficult to master. As you go through the game and challenge even the harder enemies, uh, it can be rewarding for those who really do master all the different weapons and utilities that are given to Kratos. This game does also see the return of Valkyries as well in the form of a different type of enemy uh, that you will experience as you go through the game. These are also very fun going through as you decide to hunt down these optional enemies for different gear and weapons. As well as we do also see the return of a super boss like in the end as well as a couple harder enemies as well. As you go through along with the combat there are tons and tons of side quests that give you so many extra things to do. The best part of all these side quests is that as you go off to take a break from doing the main story. It never feels like it strains too far away from that, and it never feels like you're really going a different route compared to following the main story and the quest for Kratos Atreus and their friends. Going, exploring, and doing side quests also felt extremely rewarding and worth your time. I made it a point to try and discover almost everything I could while going around exploring, doing all side quests, and I didn't regret one second of it. Not only did it feel like I wasn't taken away, but the rewards and everything that was given to me, the challenges were all fun as well as rewarding. On top of that, crafting and upgrading gear is back in a very similar way as well, almost the exact same. All those rewards that you do get from side quests are utilized here to help you upgrade your weapons with the chaos blades as well as the axe. 
Also, it never really feels like you ever have to go and backtrack for certain things throughout the game. You will kind of go through similar areas again as you just progress through the story. So if you just happen to miss something that you might not have gotten the first time, you can wait till you kind of go back and then just kind of make it a point to go over there and finish what you might have missed beforehand. One of the best parts, in my opinion, of God of War Ragnarok is going to be the graphics and the aesthetics. This game is gorgeous. I think the beauty of this game and the fact that you never have any sort of cut in between in-game moments and cutscenes really keeps the seamless and immersion factors alive. It never feels like you're leaving and you always feel immersed, which also makes me feel like adds the story and just how good it actually is. Even as you explore the nine realms, they do feel different even though they are the same areas compared to where we've gone to in God of War. As you go through, you'll see how they've all been changed or somewhat different as we experienced all the realms having gone through the series of Fimble Winter. This also made exploring areas a lot of fun. Never did I feel like I was ever playing the same game again as I was compared to God of War 18. Even though all the familiarity of everything still feels the same, it still feels like we're in the same areas but just in different places. That is some of the case for some areas, but even exploring the Lake of the Nines, frozen over feels completely different compared to how it did in 2018. Aside from the graphics is also the music. The music is just as incredible as it was in 2018. With some of the songs returning with slightly different tweaks to them, we do get some new tracks as well as some old ones that were familiar with 2018. Part of the reason that also adds to the immersion factor is the music. The way it adds into certain scenes, the different events going on, really just drives everything home and just shows how good of a job Santa Monica Studios did with making you feel like you're right there standing next to Kratos and Treyas in some of the most insane moments throughout the game. When it comes to my complaints about the game, there is very few of them. Of course, no game is perfect and I did have a couple problems. Granted, I will say when I first played through the game, this was the day one edition or day one update. And throughout my playthrough of the game, I did actually have a few times where the game would glitch and I would just have to do a quick restart in order to kind of get things to sync back up. Even though this was annoying at times, it didn't really take away too much and the fix for these incidents were very quick and easy. There were also a couple boss fights that were pretty tedious just due to the fact that ads were there along with the boss. These were pretty frustrating fights, I'm not going to lie, but nothing that really took away from it altogether as well. These can be somewhat, somewhat of a little grind compared to the other boss fights that are in the game. Just due to the fact that the randomness, the spawns, and how things would work regarding some of these fights. But ultimately, this was only maybe, I want to say, two or three fights I can remember in total throughout the entire game. So many times in pop culture have we seen movies or games come out that are incredible, yet the sequels can never seem to quite meet the expectations of the original. It is very rare that we have sequels such as Empire Strikes Back, Terminator 2, The Dark Knight, Toy Story 2, where the sequel is just as good if not better than the original. God of War Ragnarok is on that level where it feels even better and more refined than its predecessor. With impeccable storytelling, super clean and refined combat, challenging enemies, incredible scenery and animation, and all within a package for those who are new to gaming, or for those most hardcore who desire the hardest difficulty, God of War Ragnarok truly has it all. God of War Ragnarok deserves to be in contention for 2022 Game of the Year with Elden Ring. Having recorded this now after the Game of the Awards, I will gladly say that when it comes to the Game of the Year award, the only two games that really should have been in that category were God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. In my personal opinion, God of War Ragnarok is in fact my 2022 game of the year. Which game people might think is better is completely up for their bait or interpretation. These games are totally two different experiences and will leave you falling in love with them for totally different reasons. Regardless, God of War 2018 and Ragnarok are must plays and should be experienced by all. Ultimately, I sat down and I tried to think how exactly would I give God of War Ragnarok? Does it deserve a perfect 10 out of 10? Or do the little fuzz hold it back? Ultimately, I decided 
I gave God of War Ragnarok a perfect 10 out of 10 as I felt that the little errors it had weren't enough to really mark the game down for what it was. I look forward to whatever Santa Monica Studios has in the future and I can't wait to see how they could even follow this up or what they have in store next with a different franchise. So that is going to be it for my review of God of War Ragnarok. Incredible game from start to finish. The story, the gameplay, everything. I loved every moment of it and I constantly look forward to being able to finish it. And I know everybody that picks this up and plays this will feel the exact same way. That's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you all love the video and the review. If you can, please like the video, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Both greatly help me out so much, and I would extremely appreciate it. But with that, that is going to be it. Until next time, I hope you all take care. Peace. Deuces. See ya.